It's time to save Vinyl City with the power of rock. And with two zany looking characters, what could possibly go wrong? Well, a lot. But is that good or bad? I picked up this game and I had no idea what was in store for me. I just saw that it had a, like a guitar and a drummer and there was combat involved, so I was like, Oh, okay, rhythm beat em up battler. It's no problem for a beast like me who can absolutely beat the absolute bells off of games like Osu. I really like the idea of using music to actually predict whether your enemies are gonna attack or not. Much like when you're playing Pokemon under your bed covers and you're listening for your parents' footsteps. You can only imagine my excitement when this actually turns out to be applicable to the bosses too. And man, those first two bosses are a lot of fun. But before we get there, let's just talk about the premise of the game a little bit. You're two rockers and you're basically trying to restore power to the city that's been taken over by evil EDM. Everything is based around power and music in this city and so I think it's really cool that everything correlates to that. I also think it's a really interesting choice to use EDM as the enemy because that is quite a popular genre and I can imagine there'd be a couple upset fanboys over making them the enemy. I actually did a little bit of digging and apparently this game was also made partially as a protest so I think it's really awesome that there's overlap between the game and real life issues right now. So remember when I said before the first two bosses are cool? They really are. The first DJ universe guy, he's got the whole solar system revolving around him and he attacks you with the planets while he DJs. That is cool. That's thematic and I got a lot of fun out of that boss fight. The second one, also very cool. You're fighting a cyber mermaid that's actually controlled by five nerdy kids and you actually go into that world and watch her turn into a fish. Also very thematic and creative, 10 out of 10. But much like high school relationships, all good things must end, and here's where we get into where this game starts to suck. After the second boss, the quality of the future ones you face is really kinda hit or miss. The third boss is this piano playing girl who's really good and she has like an angry mom that protects her. And while that definitely exists in real life where there's these like Karens who send their precious little pay pay daughter to these advanced military piano schools to become the ultimate pianist in the world, I feel like that's a little bit of a niche joke and not a ton of people would be able to relate to that so it seems a little bit random. The fourth boss you face is named Ten Ten, and it's basically a boy band group. Now, this is actually pretty cool because it's in line with what's popular these days, and everyone can relate to that. What gets a little weirder is when they introduce another guy, and he's some sort of sailor who enjoys himself monologuing, but that came out of nowhere. There was like no build up for it, he wasn't even listed as the boss, probably the manager or something, but it really is kind of out of left field, and you have no time time really to adjust to what's happening in the boss fight, especially on a plot level. Now these guys have a pretty solid gag going for them in that when you destroy one of them, a factory comes and instantly replaces them. I think that's a pretty good cheap shot at the pop culture today where these companies just churn out these musical assets. The fifth one is just the drummer's ex-girlfriend and she doesn't even have to do anything with music. She's just like basically a glorified Tumblr girl if they got famous. She doesn't even like play music in any form really. And so finding her really felt like a derailment to the story because why is she the number one if she doesn't sing or if she doesn't play instruments or do anything? It was, it was really kind of jarring and you fight her in like an art gallery. So that's not even like a music place. The second thing that kind of really threw me for a loop is how short this game is. Now I am all for short games and I love just trying to enjoy the experience while it lasts instead of having it be dragged out over like 60 hours. But this was a little too short. And the reason I say that is because the story is just all over the place. There's really no build up for character. Take Zook's brother. He has one cutscene, and then you fight him and then you never see him again. Sailor TV head over there pretty much is just there for a gag and has his own little monologuing section that's really not that funny and dragged on for a while, but he doesn't have any build up or any introduction to things other than that he's involved with Ten Ten. And finally, spoiler alert for all of you, at the very end, there's this orange hair guy that joined you on your journey a while ago 
that ends up being the ultimate villain where he just wants to replace the government with his own type of government. But he doesn't really get that much interaction with you besides briefing you on bosses if you don't really dive into it. So that could be on me, but I would definitely say the story could have made him a little more important, maybe included him in a couple more cutscenes. My final complaint about the game is that it just has a lackluster combat system. It just, it's super flat. There's no need for a lot of the upgrades you get. You pretty much get one or two and you just stick to them because they're what works. And the other ones just straight up don't work on some of the bosses, which is where you spend a lot of your time fighting. The other time you'll spend fighting is through these mobs, which I thought there was going to be a lot more of. In the tutorial, there's this bot that stomps on the beat for his attack. And I was really stoked about this. I was like, okay, one, two, three, four, stomp. I know when he's going to attack now. That's really cool. And I was really looking forward to more of this type of musical combat. However, the variety of enemies you face is surprisingly lean. And during the game, because of all the other sound effects of your attacking, it was hard to hear the music and hard to hear these guys attacking on beat. So that was disappointing. I think there was even one bot who just punches the ground a lot and it doesn't even go on beat. So they kind of did away with that. But overall, I would have to say I was really hoping for the developers to use the mechanics that they put in there themselves to their full potential, which they definitely did not get to. Finally, one last note, I would like to say that the sound mixing during the boss fights was very good. I liked when you were starting to damage the boss, the music mix would start to go from EDM to rock bass. When the boss's health gets lower, there's a meter at the top that shows you which side is more powerful, and that's the side that will play more music. So when you're winning, you'll start hearing more electric guitar, you'll start hearing more drums. So does this game suck? I would have to say this is one of the most frustrating types of games, where you see how much potential it has. You really want the game to succeed, but in its current state, it does suck. And by the end of the game, the colors that are so vibrant everywhere were starting to seem a little more dull. I wish they had spent a little more time trying to flesh out their world, and the combat system, and then that would have been such a different game. But I would have to say that right now, for people who are looking for good gameplay, this probably isn't the game for you right now. For those that want a cool world and explore what it has to offer, that is also going to fall flat a little bit, but it might be worth your time.